really invest in your team, right? Your your employees after you know your first 50 members or whatever, your employees are going to be the daily interaction. And if you haven't given them sufficient attention, you could see that the brand or the culture of your gym drops, even though you've given your best effort. So making sure that we, you know, give them everything we can. Welcome to the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, Team Rockstar Fit. Team Rockstar Fit is the award-winning mastermind group for women in fitness to expand their careers online in partnership with Beachbody. Don't get left behind in the industry. Get support, get online, and get ahead. Visit teamrockstarfit.com to schedule your free strategy session. Now, one more thing today. Make sure you listen in after our main interview because I had a chance to catch up with the founder of Team Rockstar Fit, Trina Gray, and she gives us a little behind the scenes look at what it feels like to be part of her amazing team. So stay tuned for that coming up. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My special guest this week is CJ Martin, the founder of Invictus Fitness. In 2008, CJ decided to leave a successful legal career to make a greater, more positive impact on others' lives, which is when he founded Invictus Fitness, an organization that fulfills that mission via their physical locations and their online training programs. CJ has coached more than 50 individual athletes and dozens of Masters athletes to the CrossFit Games. He has also coached Team Invictus to the CrossFit Games for 10 consecutive years. On top of all of that, CJ is also the co-founder of Kids Helping Kids, a nonprofit organization that has raised over $5 million for neonatal intensive care and pediatric units throughout Oregon. One of the many great qualities about CrossFit Invictus is the strong network and relationships that they've built amongst their members and their local community. So today you're going to get a first-hand account of how CJ and the team have built and nurtured that community environment. Specifically, we chat about the evolution of CrossFit and how it's changed over the years. CJ shares some of the ways that they make members feel welcome when they first start training with them. We discuss the CrossFit Games and the challenges and the impact that they've had on building community. CJ gives us an insight into the commercial benefits of having a strong community and just wait until you hear how much their retail sales are worth. And last of all, he leaves us with tips for building a community inside your fitness business. We're about to transition into my interview with CJ, but first, thank you to our podcast partner, Team Rockstar Fit. Do you own a club or a studio? Are you missing out on nutrition solutions and online coaching tools for your clients? Well, here is the answer. Visit teamrockstarfit.com to schedule your free consultation. We're diving straight into my interview with CJ today, and I started off by asking him to share his thoughts around the evolution of CrossFit in relation to members and the community. Here's what he had to say. I would say that the community focus is really what draws most anybody to CrossFit. I know for myself, I was you know an athlete and did both team sports and individual sports. And after that you know phase of my life had passed and I became an attorney, I, you know, kind of found myself wanting for something more exciting than going to a gym with a bunch of mirrors and doing bicep curls standing on a BOSU ball. And, uh, and it was kind of around that time that I started to see, you know, CrossFit popping out and it, it felt like a sport, but it felt like a sport that I could train with others. Um, and it just felt so familiar to me. I grew up doing martial arts where it's an individual practice, but you do it in this group. And it felt really good to be back surrounded with people. And so I think that was the initial draw. And I think as we look in, you know, if I'm being totally honest, I, you know, there's a lot of ways to get people insanely fit. And it's not necessarily the power of the CrossFit program as much as it is the power of the CrossFit community that I think really 
uh, drew people in and kept them engaged in their fitness and, and, and asked them to focus on their nutrition. So you mentioned that you feel as though there has been an evolution since those days when you first started. If you were to look at the, if you were to look at CrossFit boxes and the community now, what does the current kind of landscape look like? Sure. Well, I mean, I'd say, I guess, first and foremost, from my perspective as a coach, if I look back at what I was doing 12, 13 years ago, you know, there, there wasn't even a hint of, uh, of, of good, program design and conscientious uh, physiology, right? And so now we kind of look and we advance. And I think every year we see, you know, a better and better service and product that we put out there in terms of the actual exercise science. Um, I think that's been a massive evolution. Um, I also think there's been an evolution in the mindset of, uh, uh, of people that are participating in our gyms, which... Early on, there was very much a, you know, a hardcore kind of more compete every day type of mindset. Um, and then you start to realize like, hey, we can't actually treat everybody uh, in this space that way. And you're going to start to see burnout and you're going to start to see things that um, we wouldn't want for our clients. Um, and so then it's been, um, you know, I know for us, I think it was 2011, we started offering multiple different programs that better assess um, or you know better help facilitate people toward their goals. So, for example, my parents were working out at the gym. We had seventy-year-old clients. I really didn't need them doing the Olympic lifts, right? Mm-hmm. And so, it became stripping the program of complex movements, but allowing you know uh, a one program, our performance program that allows, you know, one rep maxes and uh, Olympic lifts and higher complexity gymnastics to be done in the same movement patterns as our fitness program, which was more for my parents that had them moving in similar patterns, but without the complexity. It didn't have them doing one rep maxes. And so I think that as we traveled along that path with uh, with CrossFit and, and, you know, functional fitness, group fitness, then we started to see, you know, hey, we have to be able to do this and still reach all of the, you know, various goals of the members that are coming into our facility. That's a very interesting perspective on it. And I must say, being a, being a CrossFitter myself, I've definitely witnessed that evolution. Uh, and I belong to a box which has a, such a broad spectrum of people that are participating. Uh, and I've definitely seen that programming being adapted. And, uh, and it's interesting the effect that that then has on the community feel because you've got such a wide range of participants, I guess, in a lot of boxes out there now. So I've got to say, when I was, um, I was at Invictus earlier this year, early in 2019, and it was my first time visiting the box and on arrival the coaches but also the members just made me feel super welcome i just felt at home the second that i walked in the doors in your experience cj what would you say are some of the practical actions that you actually do at your box to make new people or even current members for that matter feel really welcome and really at home yeah that's a, that's a great question thank you that's a, a nice compliment i think that's you know the thing that we take pride in is that we want people to come here and feel welcome. One of our, you know, big push points was that we wanted to be inclusive from the very start. And, and back, you know, talk about evolution across the, in 2007, eight, nine, it was very much kind of a, most gym logos were skull and crossbones and it was very intimidating to walk into gyms. And we wanted to really break that. And we've always had a focus on making sure that people felt welcome. People felt comfortable. People felt, free to be a little bit vulnerable because um, working out really hard in a group is scary for a lot of people, right? And there's a lot of movements that people are unfamiliar with. And um, it's always best to tackle that with a group that you feel comfortable around and and that you know is going to support and encourage you. And so from the business perspective, we've just always tried to make a very concerted effort to make sure that our coaches call members by name and know the names of every member that walks in, that we have a reception staff that does the same and that knows about those people more than just their name, but, um, you know, what they do, how their family, how many kids they have, all of that. And so it's just been something that we've tried to create a culture around 
of making sure that we're really honoring the individual that walks in the doors. Well, it's definitely, definitely communicated. And we have, as we're recording this interview today, we're only just off the back of the regionals here in Australia and I guess right around the world at the moment. And, of course, you've got the games and you've got different challenges. What would you say those uh, events have or what role do they play when it comes to building a community? Gosh, this is a really good question. I think it's one that is, um, is, is almost divisive in the CrossFit community. Because you'll see a lot of people say, you know, uh, don't, you know, you don't ever want to prioritize the competitive side of the sport because it just alienates people. And I think there's a lot to that. And I, I wouldn't disagree with that wholesale, but, you know, we've also had a very strong presence in the competitive side. I mean, you know, not to, to be arrogant about it, but we've had the most successful competitive program in terms of teams and individuals. And, Yet, I don't feel like we've ever had to do it and allow our community to suffer, right? Is that the way we look at, you know, our, any member that walks into our gym is that they have a goal and our job as coaches is to help them reach it. So if somebody walks in and their goal is to make the CrossFit Games, we have an opportunity to help them achieve that by making sure that they get every, everything they need from the education, support, and encouragement to do it. By the same token, if somebody walks in and they want to lose a hundred pounds, then that's you know what we're going to focus our efforts on is doing everything we can to help them be successful. And so, I think from an individual basis, we treat it the same. From the community basis, we preach the exact same thing: is that whoever is in the gym next to you has come in because they have a goal and they're willing to work hard toward it. And all we ask of anybody is that they support that and they encourage it. And they're always there to hold somebody else, you know, a friend accountable. And so we've tried to kind of de-emphasize really the nature of the goal shouldn't matter. We're all in this together. Everybody's here to become better versions of themselves. It's a really great perspective and outlook to, uh, to have on that. And thank you for answering that question, CJ. There was something that was happening at CrossFit Invictus when I was there. And that was like a, I don't, I actually don't know the name of it. It was like a Friday night workout. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. and I thought that was really interesting because there was two elements, and to me, this was a really special way of bringing together different members within your overall community. Because you had some people that were working out, you had some people that were kind of on the sidelines, watching on, cheering on. Um, just a really interesting dynamic, and I love that that is a really great way to blend uh, different members in your community. Tell us a little bit about the Friday night workouts. Sure. Yeah. So it's an event we call Friday Night Lights. It started, we started doing it the very first year of the CrossFit Games Open Workout, right? Which is an online qualifying workout. So uh, workouts posted and everybody does it and submits their scores. And so we said, well, this would be really fun. Let's get everybody together to do it in front of, you know, all their, you know, gym member friends. And so people show up and the people that want to tackle the workout will tackle the workout and people that want to just support their friends have that option too. And so we started to get, you know, uh, tons of athletes that are wanting to do it in front of this community and crowd. Um, and then we would get, you know, 150 to 200 members showing up just to cheer them on. Um, and so it became a really fun time of year because, for a lot of, you know, our more competitive athletes, they may have been training just for these five weeks. And so then to have their friends and family, you know, surrounding them and cheering for them and pushing them to, uh, to do their best in these workouts, I think made it special for them. And it made it such that they, they would compete well. Um, but from our general community, it also provided an opportunity to bring all those people into one space at one time. And anytime you can do that and create those connections and create opportunities for people to meet and network and create, you know, stronger friendships, then I think it's a win for our community. So let's talk about the commercial aspects of that as well, because I seem to recall that I think there was either a, a sponsor of one of the nights that I was there, or there was some type of a partnership going on where, um, let's say a local retailer had maybe bought in some products or something. What are the commercial benefits to you, to your box specifically, when you have such a strong community and you, you have these events that are going on? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we've had sponsors that, you know, would love to be able to get out in front of our, you know, a couple hundred people that are there to kind of showcase their products. And we, you know, it's, it's also a great opportunity, like even for some of our members who might have businesses that are, you know, complementary to the fitness world that, that can show up with meal services and, and let people sample their foods. And so it becomes a really cool opportunity to highlight people that have supported us in our community and, you know, hopefully find them new clients as well. That's awesome. CJ, what about when it comes to purchases in club, like merchandise, branded merchandise or um, selling shoes and that type of thing? Do you find as though the community drives those purchases or, or the relationships within the business drive that stronger than usual? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and, I'll just tell you my personal um, belief is every time, so we've always broken out merchandise as a separate revenue category in all of our financials. And while we've had some extremely exciting years in terms of revenue generation on merchandise, what I've always said about it is that merchandise is more about brand equity than anything. And if you have a strong community and if you have a service that people are so excited about being part of, then you're going to see those sales increase quickly. And so um, whenever we've looked at that, we've done, you know, over three quarters of a million dollars in in apparel in a year. And we say, okay, that's, that's not just great on our financials. It tells us that we're doing something well that's resonating with people that want to be associated with the brand. And so... I'm not sure. I never look at our apparel as the starting point. I look at our community as the starting point. And then we see those ancillary benefits of retail sales. We see, you know, people bringing in their friends to join the gym because they're having a great time and they want to share this, you know, with the the people that are important to them. Did you say three quarters of a million dollars? Yeah. In, uh, and that's, that's both online sales and, uh, and our, you know, gym community sales. Just through CrossFit Invictus? Yeah. Oh, that is huge, CJ. My God. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. So it does definitely show the power of that that community, as you say, and I love the perspective that you have on that, that it's really about community first and then and then the merchandise kind of comes comes complementary or secondary to that. So we uh, we wrap up each of our interviews, CJ, with Fitbizpiration, and we would love you for you to share with us three tips for building a community inside your business. Oh, great question. Um, so I think that the first is uh, to make sure you identify your purpose. Um, and I think that it's tough to run a business in, in the fitness industry unless your whole focus is, you know, outward and on the people that you're going to serve. Um, so my first, I guess, would be make sure that you've identified your purpose and make sure that it's, uh, it's to help others. Um, I think the second is to really invest in your team, right? Your, your employees after, you know, your first 50 members or whatever, your employees are going to be the daily interaction. And if you haven't given them sufficient attention, you could see that the brand or the culture of your gym drops, even though you've given your best effort. So making sure that we, you know, give them everything we can. And I think the third is to con- constantly try to, um, you know, improve your services. It's that, you know, getting 1% better every day um, to make sure that you don't get stale and, uh, and kind of complacent. Can I throw you one little bonus question, CJ? Of yeah. I mentioned earlier that when I visited your facility, I, I immediately felt very welcomed in the doors. And you just mentioned there how important your team is within your business. So can you just share with us maybe one way that you keep your team members engaged in the business? Sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, I think this is, it's been interesting because like I said, we've been reading uh, books on team culture and legacy and culture code. And I think once you start digging in, it's not ever one thing. It's a series of small things. It's the check-ins with them. It's making sure that they're doing well personally. But there's also has to be that commitment to treating them like professionals. And that was one of the things that we really set out to do when we started 
is I wanted, I came from, uh, you know, a, a career as a lawyer in which, you know, I was paid a nice salary. I had vacation time. I had all these. And when I moved into the fitness industry, almost everybody was paid hourly. They were often considered independent contractors. And so one of the things that we did right away was that we, everybody was an employee. Everybody had health benefits. Everybody had paid time off. And I think that that goes a long way in treating people as professionals that allows you to expect them to act like professionals. Perfect answer to that question, CJ. Thanks for giving us that little insight. Look, thank you for joining us on the show today. It's really nice to take quite a different look at the fitness industry through the uh, through the eyes of CrossFit. And it was really fascinating to hear about how you build that community and the evolution over time, how things have kind of changed and, and evolved over a period of time and, uh, and just how important community is in the CrossFit world. So thank you for joining us on the show today, CJ. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you once again to CJ for today's interview. Now here's a message from our friends at Loud Rumor. Advertising is not expensive. Obscurity is. Being unknown in your own community. And for just $99 a month, you can put an end to all of that. Loud Rumor has worked with over 1,500 fitness studios all over the world. And for only $99, we'll teach you step-by-step how to run ad campaigns like some of the largest fitness franchises on the planet. To learn more and get a bunch of sample training videos, go to loudrumorvt.com. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. As mentioned up front, I recently caught up with the founder of Team Rockstar Fit. She's a two-time guest and longtime partner of the show, Trina Gray. Take a listen. Trina, I am so, so thrilled to have you back on the show. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much, Chantal, for having me. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you. So give us a bit of an update. What has been happening with Team Rockstar Fit lately? Well, we are coming off a huge summer. Our team... Uh, met up in Indianapolis, Indiana for an incredible business retreat of masterminding and learning and digging into online coaching um, and building an income and fitness with more freedom attached to it. We had an incredible day long uh, mastermind session and then we kicked it up, kicked off the evening with a fun reception with our top leaders. So this summer has been just an amazing time of while other people are maybe taking their foot off the gas in the fitness industry or missing their clients or maybe even struggling with some revenues, my team has been keeping their foot on the gas, um, online coaching, building their business, gaining new clients, and really growing. We have seen growth um, this summer, you know, working on our own hours, on our own time um, with a lot of freedom attached, but our team is just in such a great spot with momentum right now. Trina, now Team Rockstar Fit and yourself, you've been a partner of the show for the last couple of years now, but just in case there's anyone listening that is new to the FBP family, just paint us a picture of what the Team Rockstar Fit team looks like. Who is it that you're actually working with in the industry? Oh, that's that's so great. And I would love for people to know it's a really unique niche. So Team Rockstar Fit is a, a high return online mastermind group. I specifically work with women in fitness who love fitness and have bigger dreams for their income and for their impact and for their career. So we partner with my friends at Team Beachbody. We use programs, fitness programs, nutritional plans, nutritional products, um, a custom app. We use lots of tools from Team Beachbody to help women in fitness coach online, reach more clients, on their own hours, no matter where they live, and grow their own brand and a bigger reach in fitness. So that's my team with thousands of women across the US, Canada, and the UK. That's currently where we operate. I founded the team 10 years ago, and it has grown tremendously. We have women who are um, just thriving in the industry, whether they're still training or teaching yoga classes or Pilates, or maybe they've opened their own studio, or maybe they're staying at home with their kids, but still want to be involved in fitness. I've helped literally thousands of women grow their career in fitness in partnership with Team Beachbody. 
Well, I have to say, I love watching your social media activity because all of the time I'm seeing you posting these fantastic photos where you have your online team meetings. And I see like, you know, all of these squares with different women on camera that you're obviously coaching and working with at the time. So what do you normally find is that motivation for people to join your team? Oh, I love that you watch my social media and I love that you see in action um, one of the reasons why people join, I would say the number one reason, Chantal, is that women in fitness want support. They want masterminding. They want career guidance and advice from other women, from other moms, from other women who want to have balance in their life and they want to take care of their different roles, spouse or significant other as a mom or an empty nester. These are women who are looking for networking, masterminding, and career guidance and support. That's the main reason why people come to me. When they do come to me for that reason, I let them know that they can earn extra money online when they're not literally physically with clients, or if they no longer want to work out of the gym, or they want to make more income outside the gym. I teach them how to earn money online on their own hours, on their own time. And then that's the second reason. Then the third reason is that they really do want other solutions for their clients. So women come to me and say, hey, I can help my clients with their fitness, but I really do need help with their meal planning or their supplementation. So Beachbody just has such a depth and such a corner on the market of high quality meal planning, nutritional programs, and nutritional products. So women who come to me can get all three. They can get masterminding and support and not feel like they're growing their career on an island by themselves. They can learn how to train online and grow a brand online for a very inexpensive way to start. And third, they can get real solutions for their clients to help them get better results. You know what, Trina, I always feel like one of the best ways to truly see into a business or into a brand is by looking at looking at it through the eyes of one of the members. So having a look at maybe a case study or a story, is there any anything you can share with us from the eyes of one of the Team Rockstar Fit members? Absolutely. One of the women I'm having so much joy working with lately, her name is Carrie Keen, and uh, she's a newer studio owner in Oklahoma. We actually crossed paths at an IDEA um, personal training institute event a couple of years ago, and we've stayed in touch on social media. She saw the same things you saw, um, women masterminding in the fitness industry, women earning money online, women helping their clients get better results. So I, uh, she joined my team earlier this year and has just had stellar results. Number one, she's been using different programs and products for her own health and fitness and has gotten in really in the best shape of her life in her 50s. And she is happy and healthy and thriving, um, really just taking care of herself. I think that's just a fun byproduct of getting involved in this team is that women start to even tune more into their own self-care. In addition to that, Carrie's added some really great tools to her new studio. So new nutritional products, um, extra off day workouts for people to do on their own time. So she's been able to bring in a new revenue stream to her studio, which is a huge perk in paying the overhead. And third, she's been able to expand and coach people online and offer support to her clients outside of their training sessions. And she's been able to support clients who are no longer with her or have moved away um, or live in a different state. So Carrie's really taken advantage of all aspects of the team. She's gotten to meet new friends on the team. She has participated in our team's book clubs. She's worked on her own health and fitness. Um, she's brought revenue into her studio and she's created new revenue streams. So Carrie is just a really great case study of someone who's getting, getting everything out of this amazing partnership. That is such a fantastic example. I love hearing about Carrie. So Trina, if our FBP family out there, our women in the FBP family out there are listening and thinking, this is something that I want to know more about. I want to connect with Trina and learn more about Team Rockstar Fit. What is the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, going to my website, teamrockstarfit.com is a really easy way to get on my calendar. Because if you just click the red button at the top, start now, 
Um, you fill out a really simple form. You tell me about you, what you currently do in the industry or what you want to do in the industry, a little bit about you, a couple words about you. I review every application that comes in and then I set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy video conference with every single woman in fitness who's interested in my team. I get on and I get to know you. I just spent an hour with Kelsey in Montana yesterday who filled out my application online to just find out, is this a good fit for her? Is she a good fit for the team? And, and she is. Um, so it's really fun to be able to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with women who are interested. So going to teamrockstarfit.com is the easiest. Hey, those of you who just really prefer to stay on social media and want to find me that way, no problem. You can send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Trina Gray. I reply to my DMs. I will send you an application that way, or we can book an appointment that way. So for those of you that just want to be on your phone and on social media, you can reach me on Instagram at Trina Gray, G-R-A-Y. That is phenomenal. Lots of different options there, Trina. And just to wrap up today, I want to say a huge thank you because Team Rockstar Fit have been a partner of the show for two years now. We're going into our third year, which is just incredible. And, you know, we are so, so grateful for all of the support that you've given us and for all of the FBP family that you have helped through your business over the last couple of years. So thank you so much for that ongoing support, Trina. Oh, absolutely. I love what you do to educate and empower our industry to be better. And that's the, the content that you provide helps us become better leaders. We serve our clients better and hats off to you for on taking that on in the industry and helping us um, deliver better results. Well, thank you so much, Trina. And thanks for joining us today for a great update about Team Rockstar Fit. Thank you. And this week we have not one, but two bonus segments. My next guest is Steve Tharrett. He's the co-founder and principal of Club Intel. He's also a longtime friend of the show, and I recently caught up with him to chat about the Club Intel study for 2019. Here's Steve. Steve, a very warm welcome back to the Fitness Business Podcast. Well, thank you very much. I am honored to be participating again this year, so thank you. I was just having a think about how long we've been catching up for, and I think this is our fourth year talking about the Club Intel study, but there will certainly be some of the FBP family out there that are new to the show and maybe haven't heard about it before. So how about you start off today by giving us a little bit of a history about the Club Intel study? Okay. Uh, five years ago, we launched the study, and we call it the uh, International fitness industry trend report, what's all the rage? And we originally launched it five years ago because we didn't believe there was a study out there in the marketplace that looked at trends from an objective, measurable perspective. There were lots of opinion studies, such as by ACSM or ACE. Um, for those who don't know those, that's the American College of Sports Medicine and the American Council on Exercise. We felt it was important for operators as well as professionals in our industry to have some quantifiable data to say, this is a trend or it isn't a trend, and how many people actually do it has the behavior around it changed. So that's why we launched the study, and it's now in its fifth year, so we have a lot of quantifiable data from the last previous four years and will from this year about what operators around the world are doing. Uh, we get enough data to where we're able to segment data. So we have data for Australia. We can compare it against Russia or Europe or Latin America or against the Asian market and the U.S. So everybody gets a feel for what's happening around the globe and some of the differences that exist by the region of the globe that you reside in. Stephen, would you be able to share with us your top three insights from the 2018 study? I think one of our first insights was is that we cannot quantify trends on a purely global perspective, uh, which means our second insight was is that everything is very regionally driven. While there's some commonalities in trends, each region has some unique attributes to its trends that make it different. And I could speak to that, for example, Europe is a stronger leader in the area of use of technology mm -hmm. than, say, the U.S. or Canada or Latin America. 
Another great insight from that regional perspective is that in Brazil, a third of operators work with what's called an internet middleman or digital aggregator, such as a class pass or gym pass or someone like that. Uh, or for example, in Russia, they use internet advertising and social media far more extensively than in the US or regionally Australia, Similar to U.S. as a leader in terms of programming, particularly in terms of HIT and group exercise, far so more than other parts of the world. So that was one insight. The other was is business model has a powerful influence on the type of uh, trends that appear, whether it's in technology, programming, facilities, and equipment. So what you will find is that uh, – Nonprofits, for example, which is a business model, uh, do a lot more kids programming and youth programming as well as senior programming. Uh, you will find that multi-purpose facilities uh, tend to do a lot more programming around racket sports or around aquatics. And so I think that's important to understand is if we had a generic set of trends, it wouldn't help you if we ran a boutique or a rec center or a uh, fitness only facility, you really need to understand how trends apply to your region of country, to your business model. So uh, those are probably the three top things. And maybe a fourth insight would be is how from a technology perspective over the last few years, we went from hardly anybody using social media to everybody using social <laughs> media to nobody having a mobile app to a lot of people having a mobile app. And by the way, Australia leads the way in that, so that's a, a positive thing to think of. Uh, yet there are other technology things such as artificial intelligence, uh, AR and VR, which people refer to as mixed realities, still really haven't made much of a landing, so to speak, in our industry. So those would be the insights or takeaways that I would have. Steve, I've got to say, just hearing those insights makes me, just, just reinforces to me rather how valuable this study is. And so for everyone that is listening today, this is such an important part of our industry and really important to actually support the 2019 study. So Steve, can you now give us an insight into how business owners can get involved this year? Uh, well, obviously, uh, we want as many people to get involved as possible. Last year, we had approximately 1,500 responses representing 19,000 facilities around the globe. And what we've done to encourage greater participation is we offer the survey in seven languages, counting English being one of them. So we have it in English, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, and in Mandarin. Uh, and we work with multiple partners. So we'll work with... Uh, Europe Active, we work with Ursa, we work with CanFit Pro out of Canada, we work with Fitness Australia, we work with the Association for in Portugal and in Germany and in Brazil and in Argentina. And what we really want is whatever group, association, part of the world you are in, who are listening to this, find out from your association. We also publish it in Health Club Management and Fitness Brazil and uh, publications around the world where you can access the link. Uh, we ourselves send it out to 2,000 contacts we have. Uh, some of our close associates will send it out to theirs. So starting in September, if you are part of a group, whether it's a Rex Roundtable, whether you're in a particular association, you read a particular magazine, keep your eyes open. And if you don't see the invite, you don't see a link, let your group know or let us know at clubintel.com and we'll make sure you get a link. And We'll give it to you in all the languages, so no matter what language you prefer, you can respond in your preferred language. Well, I'm going to make it nice and easy for every single one of you that is listening right now because we will put all of those links in all of those languages on our show notes page over at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. So we'll make it super easy for everyone to, uh, to jump through and get access and take part in the Club Intel study for 2019. How does that sound, Stephen? That's awesome. And just, you know, everybody who participates can get a complimentary copy of the report. Last year's is available on our website at club-intel.com under a section called White Papers and Reports. But for the, the one that comes out this year, we will send it to everybody who we have addresses and contacts for. 
We also share it with all of our partners. We have about 18 partners around the globe and they can post it on their website. So uh, there's no, one of the things that's unique about this study is we don't charge people to get it. If you were to get a report from Europe Active or if you get it from URSA or your local association, most time you have to pay for it. This is free. And the reason it's free is because we feel the more professionals in our industry know about the trends, the better job they can do appealing to their desired audience or demographic. And that's what it's all about. We're in an industry we should be sharing our insights and not making you pay for it. So that's our philosophy behind this. I think that is a wonderful point of view, Stephen. So thank you so much for coming on and chatting to us today. I think you've given us some great insights into what the study is all about. Uh, hopefully a great encouragement for all of the FBP family to get involved no matter where you are in the world. So just one more quick reminder, I will put the links to the Club Intel study for 2019 on our show notes for today's episode, head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and all of the information will be there at your fingertips. Steve, thank you so much for joining us again today. Thank you. Uh, I'm honored. The Club Intel is honored and uh, you should be so proud of the reach that your podcast has because it does make such a huge difference for our industry. We'd like to thank our sponsor, One Fit Stop, for their support, and we highly recommend all fitness professionals go to onefitstop.com to find out how their software will enable you to take control of day-to-day -day management in your fitness business. One Fit Stop's scheduling, client management, programming, and payment collection tools will set your business up for success. Precore Quick Fire 5. Okay, team, this week we don't have our standard pre-call quick five five, and that is because next week's show is no standard interview. For those of you who follow us on social media, you will have hopefully seen our Talking Trends series of shows. These are a live video show where each month I talk to a well-known fitness industry leader to chat about the latest trends and predictions in six key areas. They are marketing, sales, managing teams, retention, fitness programming, and professional development. Well, as it happens, I was so thrilled with our September interview that I've decided to double up and release it both as a video and as a weekly show. So next week, my special guest is international health, wellness, and anti-aging expert, number one best-selling author and speaker, and the newly appointed COO of CanFit Pro, Mo Hagen. So please make sure that you join me next week when Mo and I chat about her thoughts on those six key areas of business. Thank you for joining me for this week's show. And a reminder that all the resources and links for today's episode can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. As a listener of the show, you have a special opportunity to work with JT. You can get one free session when you buy one coaching session. No matter where you are in the world, technology allows him to work with you. Simply go to activemgmt.com.au forward slash FBP family and work with JT to get more people moving and moving more often. That's one free session when you buy one coaching session and it's exclusive to you. Go to www.activemgmt.com.au forward slash FBP family. Thank you once again for joining me today. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Mm -hmm.